Woo! Hi, my salty pecans. Happy Friday. Happy house plants and cocktails Friday, my salty peeps. So let me go ahead and just double check that everything is good. Can you hear me? Am I loud and clear? Am I live? Let me know, please. Let's see. Okay. Happy Friday, y'all. So tonight's live is going to be me essentially just talking about things that I'm noticing with my plants. Hi, Miss Lady June. Perfect. All right. Great, 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 great. So I want to talk about tonight just something that I've noticed with some of my plants across the board. As a plant parent who loves to chop and crop, who loves to do water propagations, I notice that after a certain point, right, my plants in the water container starts to decline. And you're probably like, what the heck? Because I, to myself, I'm like, what the heck? What's going on? Like, it's a whole container for you to, you know, survive. And like, why are you declining? So I think I have come to the, you know, I have deduced the reasoning why that happens. So I'm going to share that with you all. I'm going to show you two of my little plants that I've noticed exhibit this, you know, this sort of issue. And also give you all a little quick recap of my week but as per usual we are going to do our cocktail of the evening so for our house plant and cocktail for tonight I'm going to be making the purple people eater and you're like purple people eater yeah purple people eater say that three times fast purple people eater purple people <laughs> purple people eater purple people eater purple people eater purple people, eater, purple people Purple people eat or purple people eat or purple people eat or purple I can't do it. Purple people eat or purple people eat or purple people eat or purple people eat or. You got to say it real slow. So for the purple people eater, I just love just the combination of how it looks. Okay. So before I get into the cocktail ingredients, I do want to just mention that from last week. Um, well, two things, right? I did end up getting the ingredients for the cocktail. So I have everything dark. Okay, I'm not going to show you all of them, but basically I have all the dark little buddies and friends for my cocktails for next week cocktail. So that one's going to be dark and spooky. Ooh, this just makes my boobs look booby. So... For the purple pe people eater <laughs> ingredients, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly let y'all know. You're going to need some vodka, blue curacao, lemon juice, grenadine, and you can use like purple sanding sugar or to even like dazzle it up. For me, what I'm actually going to do is create eyeballs. I seen just a, you know, a little picture and I'm like, how can I like make this extra Halloween-y? So we are going to also garnish it with an eyeball. And let me just grab one last thing I need to make my cocktail and we're going to get into that portion of our video. One second. So I needed to grab my toothpicks. Okay. All right, salty peeps. Let's get into making our cocktail. I 
I picked up some new ingredients for tonight's cocktail. So like I mentioned, to make a purple people eater, let me pull up the list, instructions and the ingredients. Okay, so I'm going to need one and a half ounce of vodka, one ounce of blue curacao, one ounce of lemon juice, and half an ounce of grenadine. All right. Let's do that. So the spirit mixes I'm choosing for tonight. Oh, let me move that over so I can see the screen a bit better. All right. So I'm using this blue curacao mix. I'm also using Tito's vodka. I'm not like a big vodka person, so I decided to get a Tito's <laughs> vodka for tonight. And this is the grenadine syrup that I'm using. Ironically, it's so funny, <laughs> this cocktail does call for purple sanding sugar and I've had this purple sanding I've had this like mix of sanding sugar that I've never used so perfect you also need your lemon your cocktail shaker and for me since I want to do a little extra spooky Halloweeniness to this I'm going to be creating eyeballs using lychee and maraschino cherries okay so let's get into the cocktail portion we're going to add just a few ice cubes into our cocktail shaker you know what y'all since this is a live let me let me try something new for today i actually want to see if i can record right let me record this so i can maybe put this on social media like on instagram tiktok ish social media okay using a little clean wipe okay please stay up and not fall that's all i ask of you today is to not fall and just to put some respect on me Put some respect on my cocktails tonight. All right. Gosh, I hope this works. If not, at least I tried. All right. Let me just click record. All right. So since I said I'm going to add a little extra recording, I have my phone like down there now. All right. So, salty peeps, I'm going to just go over the list of ingredients on how to make a purple people eater. As I mentioned, you're gonna need some blue curacao. The spirit I'm using is vodka from Tito's. You're gonna need some grenadine syrup. You're also, for garnishments, you're gonna need some purple sanding sugar. And I'm doing my own little DIY, you know, like eyeballs using maraschino cherries and lychee and of course you're going to need a lemon to be part of your spirit okay so the first thing i'm going to do is add some ice cubes into my cocktail shaker this thing has been melting on the counter or on the table i like my drinks to actually be chilled really chilled so i'm going to put a good amount of ice in here and as always i am using my leaf my plant leaf motif ice cubes <laughs> so cute all right that's enough ice cubes now i'm going to chop up my lemon And I'm going to need about 
one ounce of lemon juice. Let's take my little lemon squeezer and squeeze about an ounce of lemon juice. cc's okay so that's 30 cc's of lemon juice i just squeezed fresh that's the first ingredient that's going into our shaker then i'm going to take one and a half ounce of vodka we're using tito's Next, I'm going to take my blue curacao and I'm going to be putting one ounce of this. So, in the shaker we go. And lastly, we're going to take about one half of an ounce of grenadine syrup. So half an ounce, not one half, half of an ounce. So now this beautiful blue tinge is going to turn into this beautiful, like, purple color. Let's just cap everything. And go ahead and give it a shake. All right. We have this beautiful, like, purpley witches sort of brew. And to enjoy my beverage, I have this skull sort of chalice situation. But before we pour up our cocktail, I'm going to quickly make the eyeballs. So I'm going to take one maraschino cherry and one lychee. I love lychee so much. Oh, okay. Delicious. So I'm gonna take a toothpick. I'm gonna just take a lychee. I have this plate here. And I'm gonna also take a cherry. Okay, so let me just get a little closer to you all. I have my lychee and my cherry. And now, since the lychee is hollow, it has a little hole, what we're going to do is actually just stuff the cherry into the lychee. So you kind of have this eyeball, you know? And I'm just going to stick this into it. 
to give me the eyeball. So now we have the eyeball for our drink. Next, let me put this over here. So this is a little bougetto, but you know, we do what we got with what we have. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that syrup on here. Let me open this. And I'm just going to put a little bit of the purple sanding sugar. Some of the purple sanding sugar on here. And because I'm drinking this, but obviously be a little bit more, you know, professional if you're making this for other people. But again, this is just for me to enjoy with you all tonight. I'm just going to take the rem remainder of the grenadine and just you know, slightly rim my cup. And I'm just going to do a little sugar rimming, okay? A purple sugar rimming. It's not perfect. It's not professional. But it just adds to the aesthetic, okay? <laughs> we could actually do without that, but, you know... And I'm going to give this one last purple shake. And the sugar is falling all over the place. Let's get a good pour. I have the purple, which is real. Uh, if you want, you can add some more ice. I think I'm just going to top it with a little ice. Okay. But typically you'll put your ice in, you know, before. I'm going to use the last bit of ice cubes I have. And for the eyeball, I'm just going to bloop, plop my eyeball right into my drink. And it's just like floating on top. This scary little eyeball. Turn you around, eyes. Ah, it doesn't want to turn around for me. <laughs> All right, there we go. There we go. Oh, no, there we do not go. All right, y'all, this is not happening. So we have our eyeball floating in here, okay? But essentially, this is the end of our purple people eater. Let me give this a sip. Cheers. Kink, kink. I want to drink it with my hands like this. Okay. Let's drink it like that. Mmm. This is good. Mmm. Refreshing. Very refreshing. But thank you again, my salty pecans, for watching tonight's House Point and Cocktail. We made a purple people eater using a couple of delicious ingredients. If you try this, let me know what you think of it. Now, let's get on to the rest of tonight's live. Okay. And... I really do need to have like a separate little bar thing for this for when I make these videos because I really do want to use this table for the next portion, but it is what it is. All right, y'all, this is intermission. Roll in the next scene. Ooh. <laughs> All right, let me stop my phone. That was awesome. So, oh my gosh. 
last Friday when I showed up to our live, excuse me, I was talking about being furloughed and potentially, you know, being incomeless for an unforeseen amount of time. But thankfully, they did extend, you know, the time for the government to make a decision on increasing, you know, the government's budget. So right now we're on pause until mid-November, you know, before Thanksgiving for the government to decide whether or not it's going to be increasing, giving us a budget or not. So, yeah. Hi, Felix. Felix says, hi, Pam. I was shocked to watch a few videos online regarding the recent flooding in New York City area. The flooding, so bad. The flooding was horrible. And myself and a lot of other people are like, yo, what's going on? Like a lot of areas that are getting these floodings, like Park Slope, Washington Heights, you know, Park Slope is in Brooklyn. Washington Heights is in Manhattan. All of those areas are built above, on top of rivers. They're built on top of streams. You know what I mean? So that's literally why areas that we would have never thought would get this amount of flooding has been getting a lot of this flooding. So like the water, it has nowhere else to go. You know, the water is not used to being at the amount that it is. It's not used to, <laughs> we don't get these tropical storms like that and things are just so different. So these rivers, when they, you know, they go up, you know, when these bodies of waters, they rise, the water has to go somewhere. And they're just popping out of the walls. They're popping out of, uh, you know, the sewer system. They're popping out of the drainage systems. It's so bad. I remember in 2021, my grandma passed away and we went to like, so at the time she was, she was staying with my aunt, you know, she went to like visit my aunt for like a couple of months because like she comes from Haiti and then she'll come to America and, you know, we don't all live in the same area. Like one of my aunts lives in New Hampshire, but the rest of us, we live in New York City. So my aunt who lives in New Hampshire doesn't live in New York. So my grandma would have to travel out there. And that's where my grandma ended up passing away in New Hampshire. But she always spends her entire existence with us here in New York. So we decided to just like, my aunt made the decision to like bury my grandma in New Hampshire because it's just convenient for her instead of whatever the reasoning, okay? The whole point of that is coming back to New York from New Hampshire, when I tell you the flooding was horrible, it was, I was on the, those mega buses, right? Those, the coach buses that go from state to state, city to city, they'll take you from America to Canada, you know, those large big buses. The water was past the wheels, okay? We were stuck in traffic for three hours in the same exact spot. We had to allow the fire truck, which came from who knows where, after we've been sitting in traffic for hours, standstill traffic for hours, because a lot of the cars who did try to go through, you know, the flooded areas, try to go through the water, they'll get stuck, the engine will get stuck. So literally, we can't go anywhere because those cars can't go anywhere. So we had to let the fire engine squeeze itself in between buses, in between cars, in order to pump the water from the drainage to let it go down in order for the buses, for the cars, for all of these things to go by. And since 2021, honestly, it's just gotten worse. Every year it just gets worse and worse and worse. It's no longer flooding zones, you know what I mean? So New York, we're, we live on the coast, right? We live on the East Coast. It's no longer homes that are by the beach that are getting flooded anymore. 
So Hurricane Sandy, which happened, gosh, a decade ago almost, right? Hurricane Sandy ruined a lot of New York, a lot of New Jersey. But those were areas that, of course, are near bodies of water. Not anymore. Not anymore. So it's like, on top of that, New York, because of, allegedly because of how many, you know, skyscrapers that are being built in the city, they also say that due to the heaviness of the building, buildings and like, you know, just the population, New York City itself is sinking, slowly but sink, surely sinking because of just how packed we are in this small space and the land can't hold us because the land wasn't built to hold, you know, the amount of weight that we've been put on it. So that's another thing. Hi, CJ. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What you sipping on tonight? Hey, Deborah. Miss Debbie Snacks, how you doing? I hope you're having a good Friday as well. My Friday's been pretty chill. My Friday's been really nice. I work from home today. So it was, you know... Easy breezy. It was good. And then I went to pick up some dinner for me and my family. After that, I got some Trinidadian food. Dropped that off. And then I came here to set up for tonight's live. But my week's been good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I hate living at a local train station. Quick story. So there are express train stations and there are local stations. So the locals means, you know, every stop, the train will stop and express bypasses certain stations. So my station is a local station. So express trains bypass my station. Okay. It sucks that you can't rely on the MTA that you pay so much money for. And you're like so much money. I paid $2.90 for a ride. Okay. For one train. And then the next train, I had to pay $6 for the next one. So in one day, I'm pretty much spending $9 one way and then $9 back. So let's round it up to $20 just for transportation, okay? You're tipping on some tequila, CJ? No worm. Not yet. <laughs> Got to pick up the mezcal, CJ, that has the worm in it. Okay, and you have to let me know how it tastes after you eat it. <laughs> are you gonna add a little? Are you gonna dip it in maybe some sweet and spicy sauce? <laughs> Deborah says the weather systems are crazy now. Climate change is for real. I'm glad you got back from New Hampshire safe that trip. Yes, I'm so I'm so happy that we did because I think. To get to New Hampshire is about like six, seven-ish hours, right? Because you have to go to Boston, right? And then from Boston, you have to transfer to New Hampshire, which is like about an hour, right? Yeah, so it's like five, six hours to get to New Hampshire. <sighs> Haven't been there since then, but yeah. Mm. That sugar is so good on the rim. Mm, 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 mm. So let's talk about plants, okay? Oh, this is really good, y'all. And you know, I hate vodka. This is so good. It's obviously because the vodka. Oh, I'm going to have to. All right. If y'all are watching, right? YouTube, so if you're watching live right now and you're seeing advertisements come up, I'm sorry, it is not my fault. YouTube does not allow me the option to not put any ads on my live stream. But what I'm noticing though is that 
So when I say live stream, so if you're currently watching right now at 7.43 p.m. as you're actively watching, as I'm actively talking, I don't want my ads to pop up. But, you know, the playbacks, that's fine because playbacks are meant to be played back with ads, okay? It's like a normal upload, essentially. But the lives are supposed to be more special, but YouTube is not allowing me to not put ads, but it's giving me the option when it, it's playing the ads to skip them for you all. So next time I see it, I just noticed it and I clicked skip. So next time I see it, please, and I'm going to click it, let me know if it interrupts it because that's annoying. But <clears throat> let me get into the class. All right. So a couple of months ago, early spring, I chopped up my Monstera Delicioso with you all, okay? I chopped that plant up. A big portion of it I placed into here to become water propagations. And the remainder that was not being water propagated stayed in the plant pot to reroot itself. Well, to essentially put out new growth points, right? While these are to be rooted, okay? But I've been noticing over the past couple of months that the plant is declining. And it's declining to the point where I'm kind of a little frustrated about it, okay? And I think it's like a combination of things. I don't know if oh, this is something that I don't know if it's real. I don't know if thrips got to this plant because right now it's not looking like thrips, but it's giving me, I don't know what it's causing this. So let me zoom in to y'all. Can y'all see? Okay, so this is a new growth, okay? So as you can see, I hope you can see with this new growth, if I take this and I unfurl it a little bit, right here, up here, okay? This portion right here is looking like damaged and it shouldn't be because it's a new leaf unfurling. There should be no stress issues, nothing to it. And then I give it a little twirl, and let's say I look at this new growth, right, right here, and even closer to, like, down here, you know, if you see this dark mark right here, I don't know if that's being caused by the ribs, but, or if it is, Or if it is issue with the plant being stressed inside of the container, right? So I am, again, coming to the conclusion that it's really more that the plant is too root bound in here. Okay, this is what I'm telling myself. I'm telling myself that the plant needs more space to breathe and that it is no longer happy inside of this confined container, okay? So I have like, for example, this is here, this, all right. For example, this leaf, okay? It looks cute, right? Looks cute or whatever. But when I look, into the container itself, right? So this leaf. But then when you look here, this is another one of the leaves that was pretty unhappy coming out. So the growth essentially stunted and this leaf never unfurled, it browned and it like broke. So now we have a new one trying to pop out Okay, so I'm thinking that it's not getting exactly what it needs. It's too confined in this container. So we're going to upgrade the plant in two ways, right? One, we're going to be upgrading the container 
but also the second way is I really don't want to do that because I don't have like the counter space or really like the floor space. So I think I'm going to have to put it on the floor, but I'm going to separate it into two other, into another container. Okay. So, oh gosh, what I decided to do is take this here, add some water into it. And at first I told myself, instead of dividing it into two plants, I can just transfer this into here like that. But let me know what y'all think. Should I divide this plant into two containers so half of this goes in here and the other half stays in here? Or should I just trans plant, trans water contain it into just here? Because this is obviously much larger. So it should give it more like breathing room. I'm going to put these down for now. And... I'm going to make sure to add to the water my Super Thrives for added nutrients and minerals because um, I do think it might also be something that it's not receiving as much as it would want. There was one time that I think maybe, yeah, once or twice during this watering season, I actually did my, my beautiful, 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 beautiful salty pecan gorgeous so i lost my train of thought i don't know what i was saying okay okay now remember so there was one watering that i did where i actually did add some fertilizer into it i don't know if it liked when i added the fertilizer into the water but I don't know if it did much to aid in the plant's growth this past summer, okay? One second, let me just... So Deborah says, girl, my mom Sarah's been doing the same. Can't figure it out. I can't figure it out either. Ooh, so let me show you the second plant that I wanted to... Let me show you the second plant that I was talking about that I'm noticing has been doing this too, but this plant, the leaves are yellowing. Let me show you all. One second. Oh, wow. This literally the leaves are falling as I'm moving it. <laughs> Probably like six leaves just fell. So I have this here, which is doing so bad. This plant was so full. And now all of a sudden, every single last of the leaves are falling. And I can't freaking figure out why also. So this is why I'm like, is it has to do with drips? Because this is getting these little blotchy spots too that I did notice um, when I did have thrips a couple years back. So I hope it's not because I haven't had thrips issues, but... <sighs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. CJ said, "Am I adding fertilizer to my water? I I have, but I don't think I'm adding as much as the plant needs." Miss Lady June said, "Maybe it's nutrient deficient. Most likely." Deb says she's thinking something bacteria or nutrient issue. Yeah. CJ says, "Water root." can be root bound in water no worries i believe that too because i've had a lot of plants like i have a whole bunch of you know water props that give me no issue so i don't understand like what's going on with certain ones but ugly leaves i like to just snip off so i'm not even a fan of how this leaf is looking i'm just gonna toss it yeah so let's get to seeing what we can do with at least the monsteras, okay? Okay. Um, all right, here is the second intermission that I'm gonna have to do with you all. 
Let's close that. Close that. All right, that should be good. All right, let me just move some of my cocktail things off of the table because I need to use this table. I have to use it. I have no space to do nothing else. things and I'm all you guys is I'm all for y'all Okay, I'm back. Thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it. It's a one woman show, you know. It's a one woman show. So I think I'm going to just make my life a little easier for now because I don't have the floor space, to be honest, and I don't want to just keep adding a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to just transfer the whole plant into here and see that maybe, you know, that will... I just put a couple drops of Super Thrive into this, okay? Give it a, a little swirl. And you know what? I'm going to add this other little ingredient in here. I was given this so long ago. This is two ounces of plant juice, and this is bloom juice. Let me see how the bloom juice looks like. All right, um, put a drop of bloom juice in here. And I'm going to put a drop of, this is plant juice, and I just did the bloom juice. Right. Let's hope that this does add the nutrients that my plants have been begging me for. And now, oh, let me grab the Monstera, and I'm going to just carefully gather everyone. Do my best to wiggle. I'm actually using a lot of force, as gently as I can, though. All right, let me give this. It doesn't smell dirty like algae water. There are some random, like random, random bits that do have a little brown, brown, but nothing that is, you know, cause for concern. I'm just cleaning up the plant. I'm removing 
whatever dead, decayed bits are still here. Inspecting internally. Let's see. Ooh, oops. All right, don't do that. Don't don't do that. You know, let's not break. <laughs> oops. My bad. That was not supposed to happen. So, I'm just going to put this down here. Let's see. I'm just going to separate these slightly to make it easier for me to like fit them in here because it's a little tough for me to I just jam this whole thing back in there. Oh, wow. And I accidentally broke off the new leaf. This sleep was actually not bad, but I'm not happy with how the plant is looking, so I'm less paranoid and less, I guess, like beating myself up. Ugh, this whole thing. Yo, I think I'm going to have to do two containers. I'm going to have to do two containers. I tried to do the lazy girl method, and the lazy girl method is not happening, so... We're gonna do two containers, okay? All right. I'm gonna have to suck it up. <laughs> and find space in my home. And even though I'm saying like, I don't have space, I have space, y'all. You always have space as a plant parent for more plants always have the space for more plants, okay? This root is like little spaghettis. These roots are so weak. Oh, it's like shedding, but it's fine. I'll put this in here, All right? This. Let me pour this water out and give it some fresh water. Give me one second. We got the water. We got the water. I hate how this leaf is looking. I personally just want to chop this leaf off. I think it looks so hideous to me. But this was one of the original thrift sleeves from a couple years ago. And honestly, I'm not attached to this leaf like that. And I really just don't like how it looks. So I'm just going to cut it, grab my shears. 
cut it low down. I don't like how this one looks. This definitely is giving me thripsish vibes, cutting that off as well. I really just don't like how it looks. This yellow one is okay. I don't mind the yellows, the yellow ones, but I don't like the blotchy looking ones. They really are just concerning. So let's do the same thing for this water that I did with the other water. I'm going to add a smidge of bloom juice. A smidge of plant juice. Okay. And a little bit of super thrive. Many times I'm not too worried when I see like plants yellowing, you know, leaves dying, because I can come to like a reasoning why, you know, certain things are happening to certain plants during certain periods, you know, of like the month or the year. This I cannot figure out because it's been doing it when the plant should have been just like at its peak, when the plant should have been its happiest, the you know, I'm noticing a decline and I don't like that. I don't like that. At the end of the day, I grow plants for the plants to be happy, for the plants to look good. I don't grow plants just to grow plants, just to have them <laughs> look bad, you know. I'm the person that's like, no, anyone can be a plant parent, you know? No, yeah, okay. If, even if you kill a plant, it's not you, it's the plant, <laughs> you know? I try to motivate people to really, what is the word? Really embrace being a plant parent and really embrace what it is to grow a new plant and nurture that plant and provide it the care that it would ideally want but also for you as a human being knowing that okay you can take care of something that's just leaves stuff like that so for my own plants itself to not be looking good it's like Pam what's going on oh what is happening oh what's happening why is that happening let's not have that happen okay so right now I'm trying to have things not happen to these plants because it don't make sense. The good thing is that, you know, not all my plants are looking like this. M most of my plants are not looking like this. So it's not something that's like, all right, it's a, it's my whole collection that's going through an issue. It's just certain plants and I'm really noticing it's more of the water props. So a lot, like a lot of my salty peeps, you know, have been kind of like mentioning in the comments right now, it might have to do with a nutrient deficiency issue. It could be maybe a minor uh, minor pest issue. It could be a space issue. But for the most part, a lot of plants, I do know they don't mind being a little root bound in water. But I have noticed too that when my plants, they get too root bound, they do decline. But, you know, this is what plant care is about figuring out what works and what doesn't work for the plant. So I did get rid of three leaves. The three that I did mention from the get, I got rid of them and I'm going to place them inside of here, which is my collection, my little egg basket of the leaves. Just shove it in there and I shove those roots in here too, like so. And I'm also going to add my, my booby cactus. My booby cactus is going to join the collection in here, like so as well. So I'm just, I don't know why I'm collecting them, but I'm just collecting them. And, you know, who knows what I'm going to do with it. So that's pretty much it for the most part in regards to these plants. Fingers crossed, whatever is going on stops because we don't like what's going on. And the plants do bounce back. 
when, you know, God willing, the following spring, I will be potting these up. I'm going to be giving my sister either or really doesn't matter. Um, but I'm going to give my sister one of these for her place and her office. She didn't want one this year because the location she's at right now doesn't have the best of lighting. So she's like, please just keep it for me until she gets like a new office. So we're going to do that. Let's move these babies out of the way. Okay. So now in regards to this, oh. So now in regards, oh, let me not flash out my whole vagine or my nerves. Let's not do that. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick off these yellow leaves. And I'm going to pop this out of here. Let me give a look at the roots, okay? Let me get this. See. CJ says, all right, let me go up. Miss Lady June says, you go out with that sexy dress on tonight. I'm sure the woman show will be longer. LOL. <laughs> oh my gosh. CJ says, I don't like that jar because it's going to be hell to get out of once it grows. Yeah, I, I thought so too. So hopefully me dividing, you know, the plant up helps lessen you know the difficulty of pulling the plant out once it roots a bit more all right deborah says those roots look so good and juicy though <laughs> they do miss lady june right she won't be a one woman show for a hot sec look at ah guys stop <laughs> Deb says, amen to that. Pam, always find room for another plant, baby, always. As much as I'm like, Pam, you don't have space, I will make space. And if I don't have space, I will buy something to give it space. Ergo, this. Ergo, that. <laughs> Ergo, this. I will find somewhere to build up. If I can't build, you know, side to side, I'll build up. So we're figuring it out. Let's see. Deborah says, I'm so worried about the plants, y'all. It's been six days since I left town. My kid will check on them and go on FaceTime. Get with me tomorrow. L O L. Oh yes, you're you're sitting, your your pet sitting for your friends. How's that going? Oof, yo. Look at look at these roots. Let me just read more of the comments. I got a couple more. Zeb says it's so beautiful where she's at. Where are you staying again? You're by the beach, right? She said, wish I could have y'all over for my salty pecans beach party. Oh, oh yeah, you are by the beach. <laughs> Zeb says, preach this. I want my plants. Oh, here's an ad. Let me skip the ad. I skipped the ad. Hopefully um, that stopped it. Deb says, preach sis, I want my plants to thrive because then they are gorgeous and help my happiness, yes, and ability to thrive more. I adore and I'm so grateful for my home jungle. Love having a home jungle. Deb says, am I using tap water? Wonder if something is in your water. Um, I do use tap water. Honestly, the plants are just going to have to deal. I, I refuse to spend extra money on filtered water for the plants because you need tough love because in nature you're not getting filtered water you don't live by pure streams okay this is not a Poland spring plant you know deal with what you have so I add nutrients into it please <laughs> accept the nutrients I'm giving you I don't know if these roots are good or they just look really bad 
Let's see. Hi, Brianna. Oh my gosh. I haven't spoken to you in so long. Bree Bree lives all the way in Nova Scotia. That's my planty boo. How are you? CJ said you should maybe keep an eye on your water since you had that all that rain that might add more chemicals to it and keep it safe. Wish I could comment on that dress. <laughs> Y'all stop. Cut it out. Bree says, finally caught one of your lives. It's been a while. And trying to become a foster parent and plant care has suffered. Oh, she missed her big jungle. But talk with plants are no, no. Loads of Hoyas in your future. Amen. So, Bree, um, because of the fostering, um, you are, de you know, decreasing your, I guess, toxic plant collection. Because a lot of, for the most part, most plants are, in my opinion, like toxics. Like the ever so popular, you know, the basic bees of basic plants, the Epipurinium aureum, the golden pothos, is most definitely a very toxic plant, you know. But it is so commonly sold. So congratulations, Bree. Also, I'm proud of you, boo. I know how much... You know, you've been wanting this. That's awesome. You're in Manzanita Beach, Oregon. Ooh. How's the weather up there? Is it drab and dreary? Or is it sunny and just breezy and cool and just amazing? <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, salty peeps. So that's pretty much in regards to this plant. I just messed with the roots a little. You know, trying to remove any things that are like decayed. That's really serving no purpose, which is a lot of these. a good amount of that and let me just go back into this one more time to just see i think these are all right okay all right so this is all i'm gonna do for now okay give it a wrappy wrap and i'm gonna tuck you in Say good night, night night. Go back to sleep. Sleepy sleep. All right. So I'm gonna put this back to where it was, and you know what? I don't like the water. Let me pour this water out. Outside the window, one second. Oh, shh. Don't tell no one I'm doing this. Let me do this. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, come on. Pour properly, man. Making me make a mess in here. I just the towel there. All right, added some fresh water. <laughs> this water has the Super Thrive. Let's pop this in here. It has some of that bloom juice. Pop that in here. This whole entire thing is coming from this one thing here. So <sighs> shove it in here. Okay. All right, y'all. That's that for this. Back over here. All right, we're 
Okay. All right. So, my salty peeps, I'm done with trying to figure out what's going on with my plants and why my water propagations are declining. So, with the help of my lovely salty pecans, we have, you know, come to an inference. We're inferring that most likely the reasoning why your plant is yellowing while it's a water propagation could highly be um, due to nutrient deficiency. So I did add some extra nutrients into the containers. And also for me, I was also believing that maybe the plant was a little too root bound and it was unhappy with the amount of space that it was getting because in the beginning there were no roots and now every plant is overly rooted. So it just needs more space to grow. That might not be the reasoning behind, but we're not the plant ultimately. So we could only guesstimate until the plant does respond positively to all of the hard work that you are putting, you know, putting forth. Okay. Just wipe the floor really quickly. All right, salty peeps, let me... <laughs> oh no, let me read these let me read these comments. Uh, Bree says she had to cram them in one bedroom. Yikes. The main planties were pothos, monsters, and phyllos, still in the finalizing stage, but super excited to offer space. A safe space for kiddos while supporting parents. God bless you, Brianna. I swear, God bless you. She has such a kind heart. She's an educator. I, I literally, I was a nanny for a good chunk of my college years. And even now, I still watch some kiddos that I've known for over a decade, right? And like their parents have had kids, you know, so it's kind of like I still every randomly like once in a blue moon, they'll go on a date and they're like, hey, hey, I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> the reason I say that is children are a lot of work. I can handle maximum maybe like three children for of from like one family all at once. But once you start talking about children from different families, different personalities, different sort of respect levels, different upbringings. I can't handle that, okay? I can't handle no little kids, like, talking back to me because I'm not your mama, okay? So God bless all educators because I don't know how y'all do it. I don't know how, but we need y'all. You are the real parents. You take care of these children, you spend more time with them. You know, the children are at school, let's say from like 8 a.m. to 3. They go to after school if they're able to. And then the parents have them from 5 to 8. And then children go to sleep around 8 p.m. for the most part. So you're literally having their kids for three, four hours really interacting with them. Plus weekends. But the teachers are with them all day. Yeah, I need to get paid more. I need to get paid way more. Mm. Unseasonably hot, 80 degrees. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sad that it's getting colder, though, but, yeah. If y'all are still watching, I can't believe I'm an hour in. I usually end the lives, like, half hour, 45 minutes in. If you're still watching, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you're enjoying it or not. Mm. This is so good. This is so good, y'all. So good. Let's see. Miss Lady Jewel says, Virginia between Norfolk Navy Base and three shipyards. Water not good here. Oh, wow. Oh, no, no, no. No. Wow. 
Bree says her main goal is to, and focus is reunification. Moved um, some of her fave toxic plants to her bedroom. Non-toxic ones are all over. Got Hoya hookups from one of your planty peeps. Ow! We love a planty peep hookup. That's what we're here for, to help each other in the love and obsession with plants, the love and collection of houseplants. Ow! Right. Let's see. Deb says last night was a super warm, windy night. Low was 61. Ooh, I had to sleep with my AC on. I didn't need it, but I needed it. Which is above what the daytime high. What? Usually is here this time of year. She went on a nice hike, but her arthritic knee is acting up now. So chilling today. Oh, I'm not a doctor, obviously, right? But when it comes to like knee pain, um, Deb, like try to <sighs> this might be a little harder, right? But walking backwards, okay? Take your time. Walking backwards really will help with your knee because these are just different muscles that you're kind of like forcing your body to awaken, right? Because we're so used to going forward, but going backward, your body has to like give itself its balance. So when you're on your walks or even like at home, if you're like in the kitchen, just walk a little backward, you know, walk to your bedroom backward. If you have to like hold onto the wall for balance, for stability, you know, try that as well. There is no cure for arthritis, but getting the limbs a little like limber will help with some of that too cj said damn do we all need to start dressing up for our pecan party hell the fuck yes <laughs> it's a party <laughs> come in your sunday night best not sunday morning sunday no come in your saturday night best Miss Lady Jew says she's bringing her Madagascar palm indoors. It grew twice its size. Wow. That's the only plant you had outdoors. Wow. So I had one of my cactus grow double in size too. Let me show you. I just get so scared sometimes that plants are going to knock over. All right. I love with cactus, you can tell when it's pushing out new growth because of the indentation that usually occurs, right? So unless I'm super capping, unless I'm capping, did this plant grow all of this this year now i think i might be capping i think this plant only grew from here up this year and i think maybe this was growth from last yes it is i capped i lied i lied the okay so it's all it's all coming back to me it's all bubbling back in my head. This plant was, I think I got this plant either in 2020 or 2021 with Svetlana. Uh, and her it, her YouTube is Firefly in a Room. We did a collaboration a few years back. And it was kind of like little fairy garden collaboration. And I did like a cactus garden. And this was one of the cacti that I picked up. So this was growth from, I believe, maybe like 2021 to 2022. And this is like 2022 to 23 growth. So not that much. So never mind. I'm sorry. I got a little too high. 
I got a little too hype. I'm sorry. Let's see. Deborah said, my mom taught fourth and fifth grade. You did sixth, seventh, eighth grade reading. Love them all, especially the ones with rough backgrounds, poor things. They need unconditional love, safety, and to be fed. I, be I agree. They all need all of that, but there's only so much teachers can really do when the parents themselves are not able to provide that to the kids. So you see all the potential in the kids, you know, and the children, they don't understand the potential that they have, you know, it's like, it, it hurts. It really hurts. Like even when you think back to when you were in grade school, right. You think back to your friends who, were great kids who had such amazing potential, but because of the home environment, they didn't, you know, they didn't become or get to the place in life that they really could have gotten. They weren't able to flourish or thrive because of where they where they they're from. That's, I don't know why, but when I go downhill or stairs, I go backwards. Hurts less. Why? Uh, yep. <laughs> it's, it's a, it has a lot to do with, like, your muscles, the tendons, the nerves, all of those things. Like, our body has, like, millions of nerves, right? But, for example, you know your funny bone? Like, we walk around <laughs> doing everything. But the moment you hit somewhere here, you're done for. You're done for. So these are like nerves that you really don't understand that are there. And a lot of the times as we get older, we stiffen up because our bodies are not like used to like being able to like turn certain ways, you know, and like having us like do certain things and, you know, being able to like bend our arms and you know what I mean? having a bit more mobility and flexibility ranges really helps with shocking your muscles and with like arthritis and a lot of those things you can only do so much stretching you can only do so much isolation exercises and all that but they will aid in a lot of the pain like for example when you wake up Deb right when you wake up Try to, like, on your own time, try to Google, like, morning or evening, afternoon stretches to help with, you know, arthritis. You know, there are so many things that we just take for face value what we know, but there's so much that we don't know. And maybe you're not going to be cured, right? But it will make the days a little bit easier it'll make certain activities a little bit easier you know like a lot of people be like oh you know you're in your 30s you know like you can't like get down you know with the knees like you know like keep you know things like limber you know like don't please if you're in a certain age range if you're younger older whatever being able to work on your joints, no matter what size, no matter what your age, work on it, okay, y'all? And I only say that because last December, I really messed myself up and I cracked my back the way I shouldn't have. And I pretty much irritated my sciatic nerve on my left side. So because of that, I have gone into like this like rabbit hole of curing my body and figuring out like how, what, where, who, and just more information. So yeah. So CJ says, Firefly is good. Love her accent. I know. I love her. 
Hello, everybody. My name is Svetlana. I love her. That's my boo. She was one of like the original like YouTube people that I like I made friends with. I think I came across her channel. I think I had like maybe like a hundred, a hundred something. She had like 200 to 300 something. And I was just like, hey, I'm creating plant content. I would love if you would check my video out. She didn't have to, but she did. And ever since that's been my boo. That's my boo. Zeb says, amen, and so apparent which kids are getting fed, boundaries, taught, social skills, etc. Trust, I have words with my share of parents that needed to be told. Yeah. Whew. So, Salty Peeps, it has been a wonderful live stream with you all. I can't believe I stayed on this long. I was not expecting to be on this long. The fact that I'm almost an hour and a half in, which is insane, but I would not have wanted to spend my Friday night with anyone else, anywhere else. I love coming on here and just catching up with you all. My lovely Salty Pecan fam, our house plant cocktail, Friday Night Lives. Keep an eye out, though. I'm going to push myself to put out a video this weekend. I want to at least have just October, okay, have like an extra video per week and my Friday lives, okay? So, excuse me, keep an eye out. I'm going to be doing my best. This is like making me burp. So let me drink some more of it. I have been this entire week recording. So it's like a week in the life of like planty chores. Cause I don't know about you, but for me, I like to dibble and dabble daily, you know, in, in my plant care. Today be like, okay, what needs to be done? Does this need to be watering? Does it need a wiping down? Does this need a dusting? You know. It, it, this allows me to maintain my plants by being able to do things every day instead of just be like, Sundays are watering, plant care, plant washing, cleaning, and maintenance only. But Saturday, I have an event too, so I can't go to it, so now I'm all disorientated. No, I try to like do things every every day, do something, boop, 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 you know, keep myself a little active, okay? So, yes, I'm going to hit you up, CJ. I got you. I will send you an email. And with that being said, thank you so much, my Salty Pecans, for watching tonight's live. I love you all. If you aren't already, please make sure you are following me on my other social media platforms at Houseplant, H-A-U-Z-P-L-A-N-T. And again, if you haven't done so already and you're still watching, give this video a big old thumbs up for me. I love you all. I will see you on the next one. Let's get growing and happy Friday. Bye, CJ. Bye, Miss Lady June. Bye, Deb. Bye, Felix. Bye, Bree Bree. Did I say bye to everyone else? Where did you say? Yes. I love you all. Let's get growing. Bye. I'll see you all next week for more Halloween cocktail. Cheers. Look at the eyeball. It's just floating. It's just floating. Let me give y'all an eyeball. Mm. Delicious.